Few know as much about modern piracy than this man. John Burnett's education in piracy began the hard way while he was sailing solo towards Singapore. It's as terrifying as, as being waking up in the middle of the night in your bedroom on land and realizing there's a, an intruder in the, in the house. Um, it, it scared the hell out of me. He was held hostage by pirates in the South China Sea. When Burnett was released, he decided to make piracy his life's work. I ask him how Somali pirates are able to make millions in hijacks for ransom. It's nearly a corporate business plan. They have, they have um, um, uh, and it's done, run in a, in, with military precision. Like any good business, it attracts investors and suppliers. A pirate gang leader oversees the operation. That includes a pirate action group, about 8 to 12 men on two skiffs, an onboard commander, a logistics manager, an accountant, and an interpreter. Pirates will get close in the dead of night to a merchant ship like this one. They approach it, they look for one that moves slowly and is kind of low. They throw a rope with a hook or a ladder and climb up onto it. Their skiffs have powerful engines, weapons, GPS navigators, extra fuel. Tim Hart is a Somali piracy expert who tells me pirates are expanding their range, that they're attacking deeper in the Indian Ocean using motherships, which can support the smaller skiffs. Motherships are mostly low-tech, like this one, or high-end. Pirates captured this ship and used it as a base. They'll take the ships back to the anchorages off the coast of Somalia um, and they'll sit there and negotiate with the shipping companies um, to, uh, to pay a multi-million dollar ransom. While they're waiting, a whole new industry kicks in. And you have to build the boats for the pirate skiffs. You have to uh, feed the pirates. You have to feed the hostages. You, you set up restaurants. According to a United Nations report, once the cash comes in, the money is shared out depending on how crucial the pirate's role is in the hijack. Suppliers are paid back, and militiamen get about $15,000 each. Investors or financiers get 30 percent, local elders get 5 to 10 percent, and the rest is divided among the remaining pirates. Somali pirates keep their money in cash or use it to make legitimate investments in neighboring Kenya in places like Isli or Mombasa. Burnett says piracy is big bucks and out of control. There are many, many... Uh, men and women who are being held hostage and no one deals with it, no one cares about it.